Plain and simple, this video is 20, so this number times two, many things you need to know to be a data scientist. So firstly, I would definitely recommend learning how to code if you don't know a language to start with. Python is my first recommendation. A lot of people choose R, but I don't think it's gonna take you as far, so I take Python instead. And honestly, just learn how to code as much as you want before you start the journey. It's gonna help you along the way quite a bit. Second, mathematics is extremely useful. The more you know, the better you'll be. It'll take you very, very far. And if you go into the PhD and beyond world, you will get hired by some great companies if you know this stuff, combined with all of the tools I'll talk about later. But probability and statistics, linear algebra, calculus, the basics of those are gonna really help you grasp the concepts and just make you a better understander of kind of everything, including life altogether. So learn math as much as you can. Third up is data transformation. So using something like SQL, understanding the schema of a database, how it maps to other tables in a database, what those things are, how you can manipulate columns to do certain things with Lambda functions, just changing data in various ways to perform different calculations and transformations is very, very useful in pretty much everything you do. Even if you ignore data science, data still pops up everywhere no matter what you do. So it's gonna be a very useful skill to learn. Fourth up is data visualization. A lot of this stuff is really, really easy. Just plotting some simple graphs, bar graphs, pie charts, uh, you know, line graph across time is extremely useful and it's not hard at all in Python and R or Tableau if you're using kind of a weird visualization tool like that. And the more advanced you can get into visualization, like building more and more advanced dashboards is gonna be very, very useful for companies because they, uh, they monitor like a million analytics, the better you can make it look and the more interesting uh, data it shows and visualizations are explaining things, that's gonna be very, very helpful for you and your company. Five is machine learning. So including the basics of what supervised versus unsupervised versus reinforcement learning is all the way up until the super advanced stuff like ChatGPT that uses large language models that is a very advanced architecture at this point. And it even does reinforcement learning on top to learn from humans, which is really cool. So there's a lot of machine learning in between. And uh, this also merges with the next point, which is deep learning. Uh, they're very closely related. Neural networks is really the driving force. It's pretty much what deep learning means deep neural networks so many many parameters many layers of passing information through you can uh, there's many different architectures of functions you can create to solve different problems what's really interesting right now um, and i can't remember his name but someone pointed out that everything's kind of merging into the transformer architecture uh, so vision applications and speech uh, and text applications are kind of merging towards this transformer architecture it might take you a while to get there if you're watching this video but it's uh, it's really cool stuff so i recommend trying to get there as fast as you can. It's really, really interesting. Number seven is natural language processing. And definitely what I just said is associated with this in the state of the art, but just simple NLP, like understanding some of the more simple concepts, like what words and letters are, how to build very small systems and how they're trained on corpuses of text and how you process these texts, um, you know, kind of stemming and lemmatization. They're, those are terms that if you don't know what I mean, then you don't know what I mean. And if you do, then you do, um, but you can look it up. There's different transformations you can do on words, different ways you can analyze bodies of text and pass it through uh, data pipelines. It's very, very interesting. I recommend you explore the world of NLP and it's, it's a very exciting world right now. Number eight is big data technologies. So a lot of this I've said is associated, but Spark is a great tool that I haven't mentioned yet. Basically, you can spread your data across many, many clusters, basically infinitely many clusters, just increase them as you need to, uh, as your data increases. And this is going to make the computational overhead not too bad as the data gets bigger because you're doing a lot of parallelized operations. And this sounds very difficult, of course, to build Spark. It was probably pretty hard, uh, but now that it's here and the people are still working working on it. The, the framework that you and I might use is actually very, very easy. It's not much different than a normal Python library, aside from you have to know that there's the ideas of multiple clusters around. It's not too bad. I would definitely recommend learning Spark if you haven't already. Number nine is cloud computing. That's very important for data scientists because a lot of the analytics and tools you're gonna to be using are going to eventually turn into products that companies are actually using. Of course, I know we love our Jupyter Notebooks, which I haven't actually said yet. Learn Jupyter Notebooks if you haven't already. 
But once you have, do your analytics and your visualizations and your machine learning workflow. Uh, but then companies are actually going to need to turn that into real products. And often it's easier if you can do that. Uh, and so a lot of companies are looking for you to be able to just kind of turn what you've got into a cloud application. It's uh, it's not a crazy amount of skills that you have to learn. It's just a couple of different weird commands. Things get a little bit weird on the cloud. They're often Linux based, which is or like in terminal based, which is a little frustrating um, and it's a little different, but it's not too bad and it's really useful. So definitely understand the, the overhead concepts of cloud computing as well as go and do some stuff with it. It's not too bad and a great skill to learn. Number 10 is data storytelling, a term that I don't often very much use because it's kind of something you just learn rather than go and take courses and practice. You get better at telling at telling stories as you tell stories. Uh, but no matter what you are, whether you're a YouTuber like me trying to tell stories with data or you are just in a company, uh, no matter what, you're either telling a story to your boss about why this is worth it, about to uh, you know a larger group uh, presentation or you're pitching something, no matter what it is, uh, if you are working with data, odds are you're gonna to have to tell why it's important or why your analytics are important to somebody, maybe a large group of people learn how to do that, it's a useful skill. Number 11 is data ethics. So we've seen a lot of this in the news. You know, ChatGPT is getting kind of bombarded with questions from Reddit and stuff like, hey, you're using all our data. And the same, same thing, Twitter said this. Why are you using our data without uh, telling us? There's a lot going on in that about the EU is always regulating data-like stuff. And uh, it's important just to be aware of it. I'm not really going to teach any of it here. It's just something, again, that you'll kind of learn as you have to go through it. I wouldn't really practice it for a resume, but it's something that, you know, it's important important to be aware of because it's very important in today's society. Project management. Now, this is a skill, again, you'll probably learn on the job and you don't need to learn too much on your own. Uh, if you are just working a ton on your own, you can just grind out and do a lot of work yourself. You don't really have to worry about the project, like managing your projects aside from doing them. But when you go into a company, you're actually going to be kind of like a set employee that's going to have a particular role that's going to have uh, most likely many tickets assigned to you. Tickets isn't just for customer support. It's for, you know, there's a problem as a software engineer or data scientist or whatever. You're going to have to solve that. And so, yeah, learning project management uh, from both sides is actually great if you can understand why they're delegating tasks as they are and the tools they're using as well as of course the ways to you know receive it and actually it's it's not hard using jira or something like that um but it's an important skill to learn once you're in the job and i'm sure that you will business skills so this is something that you can learn on the job and it's also something that you can learn on the side that most people don't learn on the side to be honest uh, i don't really practice it on the side i just well i i mean i am doing it like i am kind of a business like person that's how i think and i think it's very very important and so i keep that in mind when i'm doing analytics type work is like how these companies are actually going to be using your analytics and a lot of it as always is again taking your analytics outside of just this jupyter notebook and trying to make it into an application and that's why in the last video i ranted about why you should really learn html and css and stuff to uh, like back-end frameworks to make a website because then you can actually uh, solve business problems if you're able to make a user experience out of the analytics and of course analytics you have to solve the business problem just technically but it's one step up from that if you can even solve it in a way that's going to make um, you know a great user experience for people so uh, business skills are very very important you can take courses on the side you can just read about it you can practice it by just doing business stuff um, and most importantly when you're in the company think actively about what the business is doing ask them questions and uh, and try to solve it the best you can now, there's a few of these that are just good for the everyday person. Number 14 here is time management. Now, basically, I don't think about time management because I just work, work, work. There is definitely other things that I do outside the hours of, you know, 5.30, 6 to 10 or so. I usually call it off, occasionally do some reading at night. Um, but uh, I don't really worry about time management. But a lot of you are slackers. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about kind of the business aspect of time management manage your time well, blah, blah, blah. No, just work. Okay, work really, really hard, whether it's in your job, um, on, on the side, if you can, you know, sneak in a little bit of your own work while at the job, and it's not going to harm anybody, probably a good idea instead of just loafing around playing a, a game or whatever it might be, or just sleeping in your chair, do what you can to, uh, to make yourself as best as possible. That's how to best manage your time genuinely. 
Number 15 is communication. This might sound a little bit cocky, but quite genuinely, the fact that I can very confidently stare into this camera and just talk and talk and talk, it's an important skill to be able to learn. And so I recommend that you get not, and probably not this good a camera, it's really not worth it for you, unless you're doing something similar, but some sort of camera, where you, your, your own webcam, where you just talk into it, you explain stuff to people. Um, if you're not so good at English or whatever language you're using, maybe practice that uh, those words as much as you can, uh, and just confidence within the language is really helpful. Um, but if you know the language regardless, you can get uh, much better skills at communication. If you just get a mic, you talk into a camera um, and explain stuff. And, and if you think you're so good at it, just make sure you do it and see the result and maybe show it to someone. If Even if you're still confident about it, show it to someone be like, did I explain this well? They might not be honest with you, but hopefully they are. And they might say it was terrible. They might say it was good. Regardless, communication, being able to talk to people uh, outside of a camera as well, of course, just actually talking to people would be very good. Um, it'll take you much, much further than any sort of software skill that you could learn. Trust me, uh, learn communication the best that you can. Teamwork, very closely associated with communication, but it is a separate thing. You have to learn how to divide tasks between people. And this is why school groups are really good at this. Um, you know, a lot of the time it is just one person doing the work in a school group and it's not always the worst thing. You know, sometimes you get an A plus and maybe both people get the credit even when one person does the work. Of course, there's better ways to divide that work and that's not the most optimal setup. However, what I'm trying to say is there's multiple approaches to teamwork and it's not just about always trying to split everything 50-50. Okay, as long as everything is getting done in a way that seems fast um, and you're all being nice to each other, you're improving the kind of um, like work chemistry that you have within your teams, that's a great idea. And so it's a useful skill to learn how to kind of conduct yourself amongst a team separate, uh, closely associated, but separate from just communicating with these people. Uh, because, you know, when you log off or, or sorry, when you, you exit your meeting, you know, now is when the teamwork happens. You're, you're working at your station, they're working at theirs, and you have to pass information between in, in a way that's not going to piss them off, in a way that's succinct and, again, communicating with them very well. So it's an important skill to learn. Number 17 is domain expertise. Elon Musk is a self-taught rocket engineer, quite genuinely, like he just read and read and read and read about it. And he now runs SpaceX because he just learned all this stuff by himself. And of course, he's many, good at many other things. If you think about him, that might not even be the first thing that it is. Tesla did not very closely associated with rockets aside from its engineering um, and, and running a company, PayPal, all this different stuff. Yet, he's a super massive domain expert in rockets and other types of things like self-driving cars. So what I'm trying to say is domain expertise, whatever sort of thing you're interested in, uh, whether I don't I don't mean like data analytics or something like that, it could be, um, but something just a field like sports or even more specific soccer, whatever you're into, try to be a real expert in that and apply the skills that you are, the technical skills that you're learning to that. And then you'll be uh, very, very expertise in one thing, but you also have broad skills that are able to dive into other topics if you want to switch. Numbers 18 and 19 are data governance and data security that is closely associated with data ethics. However, there is certain things that in a company, you know, you're going to get pages and pages and documentation about uh, the proper data governance and especially security. If you're running any sort of uh, application, it's like it's a very tricky thing because on your own, you know, you're learning to get a job and you're learning skills, you're building up projects. Often you're going to slack in those things like, hey, this might not be the most secure and optimal, you know, user experience to do this. But then when you get in a company, it becomes absolutely critical that make everything is perfectly secure, at least, it, I mean, okay, let's be honest, the world is not perfectly secure, but it's the best that uh, you can. And you're hopefully you're open and honest when you're writing code and you're not sure if it's secure um, and you're going to get hit in a company and you write code that you think is awesome. And then someone goes and say, wow, that's a massive security flaw. It's how you learn. And it's funny. I'm sure I have a lot to learn in that as well. Um, but yeah, governance and security, very, very important. Number 20 is lifelong learning. You've probably heard it before, but I mean, you can see it like ChatGPT revolutionized the world and it, it is not done yet. That particular program is not done yet. And all of this new stuff that only popped out 
from a 2017 paper six years ago, it's changing rapidly. So if you're learning concepts, um, I, I guess beginner deep learning concepts are around like 2011 or so, those like AlexNet computer vision papers. And then it goes all the way up till now about how ChatGPT is being created. And it's more of a product than an algorithm at this point. Um, but it's just fascinating stuff. It is a real lifelong journey of just staying trying to stay on the state of the state of the art the cutting edge of whatever field it may be uh, you're not going to be uh, on the cutting edge of all of this machine learning stuff you're going to have to pick some of it or maybe you don't pick uh, machine learning at all you're more into the analytics uh, which is still changing as well uh, but it's fa it's fascinating and uh, anyways that's the end of the video i hope you enjoyed it guys and uh, have a great day drop a like if you like the video subscribe if you're not subscribed and then have a great day Bye bye